Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about UB keys and how to set those up in Manjaro Linux. We'll be talking about how to use the UB key to log into the machine, how to use it for the sudo command, the other prompts that you receive uh, where you're asked for the passwords, such as using gparted or the any other partition manager when you're installing packages from the GUI package manager things like that also the terminal uh, not the terminal you open up in the desktop environment but you know if you were to hit control alt f3 or something like that to get to a terminal we want to protect that with the UV key as well so we're we'll going over a few different ways that you can use the UV key in Manjaro if you're not familiar with the YubiKey, it's just a form of multi-factor authentication. And if you set it up uh, like we do with the sudo command, it can be a form of passwordless authentication where you don't have to enter a password at all. You can use these keys to protect your PC, uh, different types of web services like Gmail, and any, anywhere else. A lot of the Microsoft services use it. There's plenty of companies out there, including like Bitwarden, that allow you to use the YubiKey. So they're very useful in protecting your account, a very good form of multi-factor authentication. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The first thing that we're gonna need to do is install a few packages. Now on my machine, I already have this all set up, so these packages don't need to be installed, but nonetheless, I'm gonna go through everything with you so that you can set up your machine just like mine. So to start out, like I said, we need to install a few packages and you can do this through the package manager uh, or you can do this through the terminal like I'm gonna do here. We'll paste this in, I'll have everything in the description. I'll also have this on the Credible Dev blog. So if you prefer to follow along with it there, you can do that as well. So we'll go ahead and put this command in, hit enter. And you'll notice since I have my YubiKey set up, it's asking me to tap my YubiKey and I'm not asked for a password. Now it looks like these packages aren't installed, but they, they actually are. So we're, I'm going to say no to this, but it'll say yes to it to install those. And then once those packages are installed, the next thing that we need to do is store the keys that we're going to um, get from the individual YubiKeys. So what you want to do now is make sure that you have your YubiKey plugged in. And another important note is that it's very recommended for you to have more than one YubiKey. So if you lose your primary one, you have another one that you can use. So we'll actually run through this twice if you have more than one YubiKey, which I hope you do. So the first thing we need to do is create a directory. And that directory is going to be in our profile under the .config directory and then we'll create a yubicode directory there and that's what this command's going to do and then our next command is where we're going to need the yubikey plugged in because this next command is actually going to prompt you to touch the key and paste that in here now i'm not running these commands because i don't want to overwrite the things i've already done so you'll put this command in you'll hit enter and then you should see your yubikey flashing for you to touch it and then once you touch it it'll write the key to the file after you've done that you're actually going to run this command again if you have a second key and you just need to make one change to it here and that's going to make it append to the file so you don't overwrite the key that you just put in so go ahead and plug in your second UB key and then run this command with that one change to it. Again, everything's down in the description or on the blog if you want to reference it there. And you hit enter, the key of flash, you'll touch it, and that puts the key in there. So now you're ready to move on. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up the UB key to be used with the sudo command. And all this is actually quite simple, surprisingly. And uh, let me just erase this command here. And the next command that you're going to run is this one. Now, before you do this, or you make any changes, you want to open up another terminal window. And in this terminal window, you want to type in sudo-s. And this is going to put you into a, a root terminal. So if anything goes wrong with what we're doing here with the sudo command, you always have this root 
terminal open so you can make changes. You can also just leave this file open once you um, you have it edited, don't close it. That way you can just come back to it and edit it and save it. And that's another option. So the line that we want to add here is this one. This line here that's auth sufficient. And then we pass in that module. We have a queue that's going to tell us to tap the UBG. Now sufficient means that the YubiKey itself is sufficient for the authentication. You can see that I have another line down here that's commented out where it's required instead. That means it's going to ask for the password and for the YubiKey. In my case, I was comfortable with just having the YubiKey as the authentication for the sudo, sudo command. If you feel comfortable with that, then you can use the sufficient one. Otherwise, you might want to consider using required, depending on your use case and how comfortable you feel. So once you've edited that, go ahead and save it, and then open up another terminal. Don't mess with the root one that we opened, just in case anything goes wrong. And type in any sudo command, so sudo ls, for example, just anything. And you should see a prompt to tap your YubiKey. Go ahead and do that, and then it prints out what is there. So we've got the sudo command set up. We can go ahead and move on. Now the next thing that we're going to set up is for actually logging into the system. So you've restarted your system or you've locked it and you come to the login screen. That's where we want to set up the YubiKey next. And for that one we're going to set it up as two-factor so it's asking us for the password and for the YubiKey. So in order to do that we just need to edit another file that is in the same directory. And that file is gdm-password. And in this file, we're doing things a little differently. You have all these auth statements, and after those, you want to add in this one here, which looks just like the one we did before, except instead of sufficient, we're using required. Again, that's for the multi-factor. We're going to be asked for the password and for the YubiKey. So we'll add this line in. Again, those are down in the description or on the blog. You just want to copy and paste them. And then once we save this file, I can't do it here because it won't record it, but once you save this file, go ahead and lock your machine. And then when you unlock it, you'll put in your password and then you'll be asked to touch your YubiKey. It should be blinking. You'll touch it and it logs you in. If something goes wrong, what you can do is hit the control and alt key and then press F3 and that'll take you to a standard terminal. You can log in, come back to this file and edit it to comment it out or remove that line that you added, whichever one. Then you can get access to your system again. And to get back to the graphical uh, desktop environment, you'll hit control alt and then F1 instead of F3. Right, so that's got you set up with logging into the system. Now, the next thing that we want to protect with our YubiKey is the terminal, which is where if you just hit Control alt f 3 you get to that standard terminal. We want to protect that as well. So to do that, we added another file in this directory, which in this case, it'll just be called login. And you can see this is another multi-factor situation where we used required instead of sufficient. So after all of the auth statements, you'll add this one here. And then once you save that, you can hit control F3 and test it out. Make sure you're prompted for the YubiKey when you log in. And lastly, the thing that a lot of people seem to have trouble figuring out how to do is using the YubiKey on the prompts that come from the package, the graphical package manager or the partition manager and various other things in your Manjaro system that you might be prompted for the password. And to get the YubiKey to work on those, we're going to edit yet another file in this directory. And this file is called polkit-1. And on this one, uh, I felt comfortable just using the YubiKey, so not having to enter my password, which is very convenient, because when you get those prompts, you can just simply tap it, 
a lot like if you had a fingerprint reader on uh, Windows or on a Mac, a lot of times you're able to do this on those prompts without entering a password. So we use the sufficient here and we add that above all the other auth statements. So that way when we hit this one, we use the enemy key and it just skips everything else because that one was sufficient. So we'll add that in and then you can go ahead and open Gparted or something that would cause that prompt to come up and you should be asked to tap your YubiKey. Once you do that, it'll accept your authentication and you're good to go. So now you have your YubiKey set up to use on your Manjaro Linux system. Your system's better protected in, in my opinion. Uh, you may want to make some changes to the sufficient versus required wherever you see fit, but you're ready to go. And if you have any questions or anything, please leave a comment down below. If this video helped you out, you found it useful, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. I really do appreciate it and have a good day. Thanks.